All right, welcome everyone. Thank you, American Indian Cultural Center for having me back to do a workshop on ribbon skirts. So those of you that are tuning in, you all might have uh, different ways of making these skirts. I just wanted to share um, what I know or maybe some techniques that I use when I'm making my ribbon skirts. Um, and if you logged on in some of our other classes, <clears throat> you'll know that I work with our youth here in the Bay Area primarily. And um, a lot of the approach that I have is to make it simple enough um, so people want to learn more. Uh, so nothing too difficult that will discourage you, but enough to make you feel empowered or give you enough skills to complete a project. Um, there probably are far superior techniques to making a ribbon skirt, but I want to show you guys one that's really fun, really easy. And um, <clears throat> if your sister asks you to make a skirt right before powwow the next day, then you'll be prepared. So <laughs> here we go. So thank you, Jenny and um, American Indian Cultural Center for sending out supply lists. So for those of you that went shopping and you guys have your supplies ready, um, <clears throat> some of the things that we'll need for this first part are gonna be your material. And if you have uh, some cotton material, that's always great for a beginner. If you have a fine fabric or like a really pretty material that you wanna use, that's cool too. So um, yeah, just wanna go ahead and encourage you guys to get your material out. Other things that we'll need straight away are um, an iron and an ironing board. Uh, if you have a cutting board, uh, let's see. Like this one over here. We're gonna use a cutting board, uh, a yardstick and some chalk. So you guys can go ahead and grab your supplies and I'll meet you back at the cutting board. All right, so if you have any questions, go ahead and enter them into the chat. Jenny is gonna help us facilitate some of your questions. Um, and for confidentiality, she can uh, speak the questions to me as we're working. If you're comfortable enough to go ahead and um, unmute yourself and ask your question, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, if for some reason my audio or my internet gets a little real choppy, uh, just let me know so I could stop and then start again. All right, so I chose to use this uh, cotton material. We're gonna make um, a ribbon skirt. And if you're gonna make this for yourself, you can go ahead and get out uh, measuring tape and measure your waist and your hips or your bottom. Uh, all three of them are probably good measurements to have because um, we want to make sure that the skirt can go over the widest part of our body. Okay, so <clears throat> my waistline is none of my business, but for the sake of doing a class, one of the um, tricks that I do, I kind of have like a like a, I guess a, like a set amount of, or a set measurement that I'll kind of use as a starting point. And then whether it's like a small uh, person, like a youth, or if it's an adult, I'll kind of go, you know, smaller or larger from there. So if, for example, we have a waist um, size of 35, or let's say that's 34, right? Then um, that's what you've measured on your measuring tape. But if um, the person's hips are bigger than that, or their bottom is bigger than that, 
say it's like 44, right, is the largest or the widest part that you want to pull your skirt on, then um, I'll also make note of that. And this fabric that we have on our cutting board is in, it's folded in half. So if you buy it off of the bolt, like on a 45 wide bolt, then it's already kind of ironed and folded in half really nicely. And you, for the most part, you can trust that it's like on the grain. Um, and so we're gonna cut out half of the skirt. So this will represent like either the front or the back of the skirt. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side, the other side of the skirt. So let's say that the widest person, I mean the widest part on, on the person's measurement is 44, right? That's half. So half of 44, you can go ahead and fold that in half if you don't wanna do your math, right? is gonna be this way. And if, um, or actually you're gonna fold it into fours. The other part that you're gonna wanna measure is like how tall the person is and how long you want the skirt to be. So um, typically with ribbon skirts and these kind of skirts, you don't want them to be super short. You don't wanna make a little mini skirt because uh, your auntie or grandma might get mad at you. And uh, send you back home to get a different skirt. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, so go ahead and measure like the length that you want your skirt. Let's see. I'm not like a very tall person. So I would take this and put it like up my waistline and see where I want it to hit the bottom of like my ankle. And then once you have that measurement, we're gonna add more um, to it, more inches to it, because we wanna account for the hem at, at the bottom of our skirt. And then also there's gonna be, um, like we're gonna do a rolled hem at the top and it's gonna roll over so that we can um, put our elastic through the waist. So <clears throat> uh, again, I'm not very tall, so this, I probably want to make my skirt about 37 inches. And for those of you that are on the call and you're really tall and you're laughing at my measurement, just wishful that I'm that taller than I am. So I'm only five three. Length. How do we? We're the same size. Tell her. Oh, my bad. I don't believe that we're the same size, Juliet, because I know that you're very, very no, tall. Same, no, you and my mom are the same length. I'm making her the ribbon skirt. <laughs> okay. I think I'm my wisdom teeth pulled, so if I have a lisp, that's what it is. Uh, all right. So <clears throat> uh, also when you get your fabric from the fabric store, um, sometimes they don't cut like it very straight. So I always put it on my cutting board and make sure that I cut like a nice straight line here. This one's only just a little bit off, so I'm gonna go ahead and correct that. And I'm just gonna clean up the line here at the end. If you have um, like a rotary cutter and a board, you can also use that uh, to cut your fabric. How many inches should we add to the length? Um, to the bottom of your skirt, you probably at least want to add like an inch and a half or maybe even two inches, depending on how um, wide you do your hem, like you roll your hem. The other part, and like for those of you that tuned into our like tea dress on Tuesday, 
if for some reason you're like, oh my goodness, I forgot like to add inches for my hem and you don't want your skirt to be shorter, like we can also add like bias tape at the end of your, just to finish off the hem on the bottom. All right, so what did I say? I said that I'm gonna do mine about 37 inches. So <clears throat> go ahead and um, actually I'm gonna do 38. Use your yardstick and you'll cut the length of your skirt. So this is going to be the top and this is going to be the bottom. And then just go ahead and once you mark it with your chalk, you can go ahead and cut. All right. Now, um, now this is the part where your waistline, yes, you want to know that, but you want to know like uh, the widest part of uh, what your skirt is going to be because we want it to fit over our, our hips or fit over our bottom. If we um, do a waist that's not going to stretch over our hips or our bottom, then um, the elastic part won't really make sense for it. And then that's when you kind of do like a fitted waist. For your dress but we're not going to do that we're going to do ours with some elastic so um i am going to go ahead and grab one of my other skirts that fits me pretty loosely i'm going to use that as a guide And you'll see this skirt is a little bit shorter because I like to wear this for special occasions with my high heels and my blazer. But this skirt that we're making is going to be a little bit longer. <clears throat> All right, so you'll see kind of like how the cutout is going to look like. Um, my hips, like this is it's gonna be four times that. And again, this skirt fits really loosely, doesn't fit real tight at all. So I'm gonna take my yardstick and I'm gonna put it here because um, it's gonna probably be about an inch for like the, the seam on the sides. And then that's, I'm gonna use that as a guide to mark my skirt. So it's gonna be like an A-line. So go ahead and grab your yardstick and your chalk and you're just going to mark all the way down across, okay? So you guys can go ahead and do that. And then once you have your line, then you can go ahead and make your cut. And that is going to be one side or one, either the front or the back of your skirt. Okay, so then we're going to get our fabric again. And we're going to cut out a piece that's exactly the same size. So we already have a clean line at this edge, at this end, because we just made that cut. So you can go ahead and grab this piece and place it on top.
I'm going to place it on top of that guy and then make your marks with your yardstick and your chalk. Once you've made your new marks, then go ahead and cut that piece and that's going to be your second piece. We actually have a question about the brand of scissors that you're using. Someone would like to know what brand they are. Yeah, these scissors um, are, let's see if you can see it. Oh, that's funny how it just shows the reflection of me and I. Um, these ones I got, I, I think I got them on Amazon, but they're made in Italy and they're super sharp. Yeah, so you'll see like when I make my cuts, it's just like, um, just like cutting butter. If, if sewing is, um, becomes a passion of yours and you, you feel like you're gonna do it often, I would definitely, uh, encourage you all to invest in like a good pair of scissors. Um, and I'm cutting fast, but those of you that are, are just getting used to fabric and cutting, I didn't cut this fast when I first started. I cut incredibly slow. So I don't want to make any mistakes. Yeah, so there you go. You have your front piece and your back piece all cut out. Here. And they call it like an A-line um, because it'll, it just flares out like an A. Uh, I will show you another um, version that I've done. And this is a youth skirt. So I didn't do, I didn't cut this at an A-line um, because when I sew, I stitch it up on the side, I just want it to really gather nicely like that. Um, so it's not going to be like an A-line, this type of skirt. So it just depends like what your liking is. If you want like a really cool skirt or you want something that's just going to go straight down like this. All right. So next step is on your cutting board. What I like to do is line up all my lines here. You'll see this natural fold that we have in the middle. I want to um, make sure that it stays on the line that I choose right here on the bottom and then all the way on the top. And when I roll it over, I can see that, okay, it's still in alignment, it's still in alignment. Um, even if it goes off my board, I can just, I know it's still in alignment right there. And then the bottom of your skirt, you're gonna line it up on one of your lines here. And you'll see this, this, this side kind of goes up a little bit high, but it's okay. Just as long as this line is right, then when we do our ribbons across, it'll still line up front and back. But this line, you wanna really make sure that it stays perpendicular to your hemline. And once you do that, once you have it all lined up, then you can decide, all right, what color ribbon do I want? How many ribbons? And where to start? I usually start um, at least like 
five or six inches from the bottom hem. And I draw a line all the way across. So you'll line up your yardstick on both sides of both ends of the skirt. And you'll go ahead and make your first mark all the way across. Make sure you don't move your skirt around on the board. It's just gonna stay like this because all these lines are gonna be, we're gonna measure them out. So again, this one I'm, I'm choosing to do it six inches up from my hem. And depending on the size of the ribbon that you have, I want to kind of play around to see, <clears throat> all right, where do I want my next ribbon to go? So this is our marking, and this is a seven, seven eighths of an inch ribbon. And that's how it's gonna look, all right? So if I'm like, oh, okay, um, where do I want my next ribbon to like stack on top of? That's our first placement. If I do it two inches up, then that's what my second placement is gonna look like. If I do it three inches up, that's what it's going to look like. So really depending on your preference, on how close you want them together or how far apart you want them together, then that's where you can make your next line. <clears throat> so I think I like this. This is three inches up from our last mark. So one, two, three. And then you go ahead and mark your material again. And I'm going to keep it consistent at three inches for each ribbon. All right. So sometimes you want to get real fancy and you want to just stack your ribbon all the way to the top. But for the sake of time and just so you guys get the picture, I might only do uh, four. And once you have this on one side of your skirt, then you're going to get your other piece and you're going to do the same thing. All right, you can see that this side again is going a little bit up, going haywire, we'll correct that later. But you do want to make sure that this line is perpendicular to your hem and it stays on that vertical line. And that just ensures that, um, that when we put these two pieces together, they're gonna line up nicely. Okay, so drop your yardstick again. And we went six inches up on the last one. And we'll do the same here. Go ahead and make your first mark. And then mark every three inches up. Mama, I don't know the password. You don't know the password? No. Okay, bring it here and I can help you. Sweet. 
And I'm going a little fast because I think in my mind when I was like, oh, we're going to start this class, I was like, I'll do a youth skirt so we can like get all the way through. And then I just got a little tangled up my thoughts. So here we are making a big person skirt. Do pretty short. All right, so now we have our markings and um, you guys can, if you have your irons ready, your ironing boards out, go ahead and grab your iron and ironing board. Um, one of the like supply uh, things on your supply list was this uh, fusible bonding web. So this is a witch stitchery brand. Um, stitch witchery, other way around. Um, and I like to use this. This works good for seven eighths ribbon. And um, if you have like wider ribbon, then uh, you can also kind of like stack them on top of each other. And so it fits the ribbon that you that you have. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take this over to our ironing board. So go ahead and place your fabric on the ironing board and we're going to take this stuff, this um, fusible bonding and just line it up with your chalk line all the way across. And it's like really, um, it's not uh, very strong so you could just rip it off. You don't have to cut it. And I make sure that's lined up. <clears throat> and then grab your ribbon and you're gonna place your ribbon right on top of it. So I've also seen this process done. Um, some folks um, have used like tacky glue and they've kind of done tacky glue on and use that as putting the ribbon on before they stitch it. I like this stuff. It comes out really nice and clean. Um, once your iron is ready and it's at the right temperature, uh, then you're ready to go ahead and fuse this on. With a lot of the fusing, like uh, applique um, with maybe heat and bond or with this stuff, it just depends what you're working with um, on the level of heat that you have on your iron. So <clears throat> if you're using heat and bond as um, like your, whatever you're gonna use to fuse your, your ribbons on, then that actually, I don't use any steam on my iron at all or else it'll kind of bubble up and if it's way too hot, if your iron's way too hot, then it'll also bubble up a lot. So with this one, you know, with this uh, witch stitchery or stitch witchery, you kind of want to find like the right temperature. And that might be like you using your, like some scrap ribbons and scrap material to find just the perfect setting um, to iron on your ribbon because it's going to take enough heat to fuse on to the fabric, but not too much heat to where it's going to bubble up. And if your webbing isn't like kind of lined up nicely and it's peeking out under the ribbon, you might get your iron kind of gunked up and wondering why like your iron isn't like like ironing smooth, it's probably because your iron is all gunked up 
And if that's the case, then you need to take a break and clean that. Now, so just make sure that your webbing stays under the ribbon and you're following the line that you made. And see how nice and clean it comes out? Um, all right. So then, <clears throat> yeah, I think for this one, I'm just going to use the same color ribbon. Or should we get fancy? So again, place your webbing down on your line and then see if you can just kind of come up close so they can see how the placement is on the line. So I'm not I'm not actually doing it putting it right up against the line. It's like one eighth of an inch like underneath my line. But when I do put the ribbon on top, I'm gonna put the ribbon all the way to the top, right? All the way to the line. So that's, that's just how I like to line it up. Let me see if I have another color. Let me use. Just do that all the way across. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one more color. And I know that some of you that are logged on right now and have taken like maybe a sewing class from me before or we made some skirts together before and uh, we used heat and bond. That's a little bit more difficult and it takes a little bit more skill and patience because if you really mess up, there's a lot of room for error. Um, and we're using that. Just trying to find a color. Maybe white, huh? But this is probably my favorite way of doing the ribbons, and also um, it's easy for beginners. There's 
less room for error doing it this way. Maybe my mom, I, I know my mom likes to make a lot of ribbon skirts and she does hers different than what I do. And then when we had a workshop with some of our elders, um, they do their, they have a different technique too. So there's so many different ways that you could do this. So this is just, just me sharing my secrets this way. And then if you guys are logging on for the first time and maybe you didn't watch any of the other ones, one of the other things I've been saying over and over on some of these classes is that um, I also think that like the student teacher process is really important. So the more um, opportunities you have to connect with your elders or other artists in your community to do this, I encourage you to reach out to them and do it because they have so many stories that go along with these teachings. Um, we can really get into the stories and the symbolism behind this. And for those that come from like intertribal communities and um, maybe this isn't like your traditional dresses different than this style then it's always good to learn and know like what the story is. So the story that I was um, told with this kind of skirt is <clears throat> that it represents like the lodge and um, those ribbons symbolize like the paintings that are on those, that lodge. And so when we wear it, it um, kind of gives us that, uh, connection to Mother Earth and remembering home and family and things like that. So there's lots of stories that our elders have to share. I'm so thankful for anyone and everyone that's taken the time to teach me some of the stuff that I know because now I get to share it with you all. And hopefully you know, you guys are sharing it with your children or your family or somebody else that can really benefit from it. So once we have all of our ribbons sewn on, or not sewn on, I'm sorry, placed on our dress, we can go ahead and start stitching. And for a really clean look, you can, you know, get thread, invest in a lot of different color threads so that you can match the ribbons that you're placing onto your skirt. With um, today's project for me, uh, I'm gonna just use this gray rib, uh, thread to go ahead and tack on these um, ribbons. So with their stitching, there's a few different stitches that you can use and you'll see in like once you go and look at someone's skirt real close, you'll see like how it's done. Some people have used a zigzag stitch um, to zigzag their ribbons on. Um, today, for the sake of like some of you all being beginners, I'm just going to do this as a straight stitch. Okay, on this next row right here, I'll show you guys how to do a zigzag stitch. And then I'll just kind of rotate so that you guys can see the difference. And um, this, if it's fused on really nicely, you see it's not going anywhere. We're gonna go ahead and use a straight stitch. And I'm gonna place my needle down right here towards the edge of the ribbon. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch. So also if you're a beginner, I would uh, encourage you guys to get like a scratch 
or um, a test piece of fabric to test out your stitch and your machine, see if everything's working good and it's the right kind of stitch that you want for the material. And once you're set and ready to go, then go ahead and do your straight stitch. Probably my grandma calling right now. <laughs> Yeah, so once you guys, I don't know if you, um, you have a good angle, yeah. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and do your straight stitch all the way across. Right. And then I grab my fabric and my um, ribbon right there so that you're not pulling on the thread. And you'll see that's our, that's our first stitch. Then I'll go ahead and go back to the top and do the other side of the fabric. I mean, I'm sorry, the other side of the ribbon and do another straight stitch all the way across. If um, you're pushing your fabric through, then it's probably, if there's something wrong with your feed, your hands are really just kind of guiding the material through the machine. So you see if I like, if I'm barely touching, that's because the machine is pulling the fabric through itself. So your hands are only just to guide that it's staying on course. All right, and there we go. We have our first line of ribbon stitched on. And then before you go and put the next one on, you kind of want to check to see if it's still fused on there <clears throat> real good, because if it's not, then your, your fabric um, and your ribbon might get out of place and you might do a wrong stitch. So for this next one, I wanna show you all um, a zigzag stitch because I think this is uh, one that a lot of folks like to use when they're putting on their ribbons. Um, so you're just gonna use this type of stitch. So if you have a digital machine, you can press your zigzag stitch or if you have dials up here, you'll go to zigzag stitch um, I'm going to adjust it. Oh, the machine doesn't want me to adjust it. Hmm. Let me get a test piece of fabric and see if I want it this wide. That might be okay. So this one is going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, so for those of you that are learning, you're doing your first skirt for the first time, I would definitely encourage you. It's easier to do a straight line than to get your eyes all cross-eyed with this zigzag stitch if you're not used to it. Um, so a zigzag stitch, your, your needle is going to fall on one side of the zigzag and the other side of the zigzag. So when that happens, you want um, like one side to, to fall on the outside of the ribbon and then the other is gonna be in the inside, okay? And I'll do a little bit more so you all can see. Okay. 
And if you can pull the camera back, yeah. This is uh, this is how that zigzag stitch is gonna look. And you're gonna do that all the way, all the way across. Okay, so you'll see that this is the zigzag stitch and in comparison to this one, the straight stitch, it's just really a matter of preference, um, what you all like. And again, we'll go ahead and iron this down to like smooth it all out again afterwards. Um, for those of you that are working on your skirts with me right now, I would suggest choosing one or the other, not doing it like this. See, for me, nobody gets that close to me, so no one's gonna tell that those are two different stitches on my skirt. But for the sake I'm of- check your stitches from now on. <laughs> What's that? I said, I'm definitely gonna check your stitches from now on. Uh-oh. <laughs> Like I said, nobody gets that close to me, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so go ahead and continue on. I'm gonna go back to a straight stitch for this one, but when I do the other side of this skirt, I'm gonna do a zigzag on this first line of this color, just so I have a little bit of consistency. Red came out. Um, some of the other things I would recommend, like those of you that um, maybe reached out to me about your machine or different things, is really get to know your machine. Um, I like read my manual and. Um, Make sure that you keep your machine nice and oiled, or you know how to like change your bobbin. I'm gonna change my bobbin right now just so we don't run out later. And a lot of the different machines have different ways of putting your bobbin in, or even threading. Um, if you have a Janome like mine, then um, they have these number guides to tell you like the little steps that you're gonna thread. So one is back here, you know, two feet over there, three is right here, four is gonna go into this little eye, and then five is back behind, and then you go ahead and thread it. And I am spoiled by an automatic threader. It hasn't always been that way for me, so. See how this white is already like coming off and it's uh, just from like moving the fabric around and all that. So you're gonna wanna take it back to the ironing board and make sure that it's fused properly before you iron that or stitch that part down.
other folks that um, maybe you don't have access to some of that fusible bonding and um, you have your ribbon, you have everything else. One other thing that you can do is once you make your markings on your skirt, you can actually just pin it down. Just pin it down and stitch it using that, those markings as your guide um, to go ahead and sew onto your fabric. So even just in comparison, like looking at this row and looking at this, these other rows that I'm doing, I really don't like the way my zigzag stitch came out. It's okay, I'm not a perfect person, guys. I mess up sometimes too. I've been sewing for a long time. Some of you young ones that are on here, like I know there's one young one on here in particular been sewing longer than you've been living. Um, yeah, I started making regalia when I was really young. So maybe like at least over 20 years. Yeah, so before I do this white ribbon, I'm gonna go ahead and take it back over to the ironing board. Make sure that it's on there nice. And then also we can uh, put on our other ribbon onto our other piece of fabric also. When I first started sewing, it was like so intimidating. I don't think I had enough patience. I just wanted to give up and throw it in. But then when I worked on like a really simple piece, then I was like, oh, okay, I can do this again. So don't get discouraged, finish it. And if, even if this one doesn't come out the way you really, really like it, like I was saying, I don't, I don't even like that one stitch that we did with the zigzag. Um, you can take it out and start again or if you keep going that's good too and do another one and your next one will come out even better all right so it looks like this is on there pretty good now so let's go ahead and take this back to the machine that last stitch. And if you really catch on to it and you're thinking like, oh yeah, you can do, I can do this. And you'll probably just want to put ribbons on everything.
All right, so we have our first half done. We're almost there. Any questions so far? As of right now, we don't have any questions on the chat, but if anyone would like to go ahead and ask a question and unmute themselves, they can, or if they want to go ahead and put it in the chat, that's a possibility as well too. All right, so one half done. So now we already have the markings on our other piece. So go ahead and grab that, bring it to the ironing board, and we're going to do the same process. <clears throat> we have a question. Um, if we wanted the ribbons to dangle on the side, would you use the same process? Um, for me, yes. I like to do this first and then like the next part would be different. Some folks that um, kind of keep it all included like in like one, one step process, I think. Um, what you would have to do, actually, and this is what I did with this other skirt, is um, when I was fusing this on, I didn't, um, let's see, this is my leftover remnants of the fuse, fusible web, but I didn't fuse it all the way to the end where my, because you're gonna have this seam, so you wanna keep a seam allowance. So if you were wanting to do uh, something like this that hangs off, then um, you can do a little bit more of your calculations or you can eyeball it. And your ribbon, you're gonna cut longer for sure. And you're only gonna fuse it or iron it until like maybe right here. Uh, and then, but you wanna make sure that this part is fused on and uh, after I'm done stitching it right up to there, I go ahead and pin this back while I do my uh, side seams. Um, and that's how I did this one. So I only stitched it up into, you know, a certain part. Um, and so it was continuous like that. But there are other methods where, um, you can have, let me go grab one of my other skirts, be right back. You can have the, the ribbon hanging um, from inside the, the seam. So you'll see like on this one, um, these ribbons are coming out from inside. And so that is like an extra step that I can show you in the video, like where and when to do this, um, this part to where you're, you're gonna be doing this, but then we're gonna also cut like another ribbon so that you have ribbons that come out the side. So you can do either one of those. Uh, techniques. I've also seen people where um, they, yes, baby. oh nice. <laughs> I've seen other people where they go ahead and they stitch up the seam like this, just regular, and then they take the ribbon and this is like one piece of ribbon and they actually stitch it right here onto the seam. <clears throat> This one's not done like that, but I've seen it done where people have added on. So like uh, already closed seam. So there's a few different ways that you can do it. Just how fancy you wanna get.
And then, so this next part uh, on this side, I might go a little bit faster just because I want um, to really be able to get through the whole process of this skirt. Um, and I kind of wish that I had done a little small skirt. That's okay. You all will just have to invite me back to finish. Just kidding. Just kidding. Shameless plug. No, uh, American Indian Cultural Center, I hear them, uh, they're doing a lot of great things and wanting to bring different classes like this. So not even just sewing classes, but other classes. They may even be like tribally specific. Um, doing some of Yaya making, so. Shout out to you all for doing that work. Like that for the community. I also really love doing these classes because, um, you know, we don't like can't assume that everybody knows all that we need to know in the different parts of our lifetime. And so if you know something and you're like willing to share it, I think that's a really great gift. Um, Especially with our youth, I know I've taken the youth to a lot of different spaces and sometimes we're not always prepared, but some of you aunties that look out for us make sure that we're prepared. And so if we need a skirt, there's been like aunties or even myself, we've had extra skirts in our car. It's like, oh, put this on. And um, or like a shawl or something, so it's always good to share. Instead of shaming them, man, sometimes they just don't know and it's okay. One of the other classes that um, we did in one of uh, my community was uh, like Apache style dresses. <clears throat> and I'm not Apache, um, but there's a lot of Apache women in our community over here in the Bay Area. So that was really neat to like, just witness and be a part of and as a seamstress, like kind of look at their style of dress and the way that they make it. So I really enjoyed that. Um, then I was just happy to see all the young women that were Apache and they got to like learn that style. And they got to wear their dresses. One of our gatherings that we had it was so awesome. So there's a lot of different opportunities or any fun stuff like that. I think you just have to pay attention. All right, so I'm just making sure that these are fused on properly. Once you have that and you're ready to go, you can bring it to the machine. And go ahead and stitch it up.
for some of you that are um, like, oh man, I found like the most beautiful fabric to do my skirt with. I would just really suggest finding some simple fabric to do um, a piece that you can learn from first before using your expensive stuff because I know that's really pricey sometimes. So. And that's what I've done. But I really love cotton dresses too. Cotton is my fancy. Oh, and it looks like, like my iron isn't really hot enough, so I'm going to take this back to iron it back down. <clears throat> and I think that also with this um, type of webbing, this sometimes will take a little bit of steam. So I'm going to just put some steam on there so it can really fuse onto my fabric. I switch back and forth a lot from um, using this kind of usable webbing to some other. I like the look of the ribbon spaced out like this, but if I'm doing them, I'm stacking them like one on top of the other. A lot of times, I'll use I'll use heat and bond for that. Hopefully that's good enough now. You might you might really just have to go back and forth to make sure your your ribbons are Those of you that are really paying attention are good listeners and I said that I was going to do a zigzag stitch right there and I didn't. I know you see me. I'm going really fast um, because I know that we have limited time tonight together and I really want to show you all how to finish this off. Um, but I um, encourage you guys to reach out if you guys are working on it and you have more questions or, hey, I forgot this one part. I know you'll have the video, but uh, you can also reach out to me directly too. Because one of the other things um, 
I think is challenging is like starting a project and not finishing it. So that's why I really want to finish this with you all because let's not do that. Let's see it through together. Yeah, because that's not me. I don't have a whole garage full of unfinished projects. No, that's none of you guys do. <laughs> uh. When we do some of our finishing stitches, um, like we're going to go ahead and do the back stitch and the forward stitch to reinforce your stitches. But these ribbons, I'm just going and starting and going all the way through and all the way to the end um, because we're going to have those side seams that are going to seal it up for us. So now we have our front and our back completed. Go ahead and good practice is just to take it back to the iron, iron it down. applying a little bit of steam on my from my iron now because um lay flat All right so there you go we have the front and back all completed. So you always will bring these um, two pieces together. And this is the part that you all were asking questions about with um, like if you want your ribbon to kind of have those flaps coming out. What you'll do then
is grab some of your ribbon, okay, and fold it in half. And before we um, we finish our seam up the sides of our skirt, you would uh, place these guys so that they can come out from the other side. So let me see if I can show you on one of the other skirts. <clears throat> so again, like I was showing you on this skirt, uh, the part of my process was uh, not sewing it all the way to the end and having the excess ribbon go continuously like that and pulling these back when I was doing my side seams. Um, but if you're going to do it this way, where these ribbons are going to come out, what you're going to do is in the inside when we um, are going to pin it we are going to place these folded um, ribbon pieces right we're going to place them inside let me see if I push this back a little we're going to place them inside right here and we're gonna stitch it and seam it up that way. All right. So I hope that makes sense. I think that with these little, um, these little ribbons, I don't really, I don't feel like I really wanna do that for this skirt. Um, but those of you that want to do that and you have more questions, just please reach out to me um, and I'll help you through that process. Okay, so <clears throat> next what we're going to do is you'll see I was trying to line uh, these ribbons up on the side here. And once you line them up and you line up your top piece and your back piece together. We're just going to go ahead and pin it. Pin it all the way. Across that seam. So your pins, sometimes you might think you want to like pin them um, parallel to your seam line. Uh, quite the opposite. You want to make sure that your pins are perpendicular to the line that you're going to sew. Not even like diagonal, like but perpendicular, meaning they're going to be like at a right angle. So I like to pin right where my ribbons are. Just make sure that they're going to be lined up when I sew it. My seam. And then once I have those ribbon parts pinned, then I'm going to go ahead and pin the rest. And for pinning, <clears throat> I, I space out my pins. So we're like, I kind of start at the middle and then do the two outers and then I go in between those pins. Once you have that side done, then go ahead and pin up the other side.
We are almost done with our skirt. Just gonna do these sides. We're gonna switch up the sides. Do our waist, do our hem, and then we are done. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and take our piece back to the machine. My camera guy is on the break right now, so he's going to come help us with the machine part. All right, we're, so we're gonna take this back over to the machine. Don't worry, we didn't forget about you guys. Um, and what I'm gonna use is, uh, I'm gonna use these markings here on the machine as a guide. And you're gonna uh, line up your your cut with, with the guide. And so if those of you that are sewing and you have this habit of like using your needle as a guide and you like to be cross-eyed, you don't have to do that. You could just use this guide right here. Um, Another cool trick is like if these guides are too, um, like the glare is too much or you can't see it real well, you can grab a piece of tape or something, um, maybe some painter's tape or what, and then just place it right here. And so you have your guide and you're using this over here, this part as your guide. So we're gonna go ahead and use a straight stitch and we're gonna sew up our side seams. If you have a machine that can't jump over your needles, you're gonna have to take your needles out. I put my needles in the other way around, but um, you're gonna have to take out your needles before you get to it. Or else you're gonna mess up the needle on your machine. Once your needle on your machine is crooked, then you're gonna have to change it out because it's, not, it's just not gonna work properly anymore. It's like almost like your machine won't let you sew anymore after that is and one cool way to check it is you know you take your needle out place it flat on um, a surface and then you can kind of get down close and see if there's if it's bent if your needle that you're sewing with is bent at all at, and you know the slightest you know bend then you want to go ahead and replace it So that's one side stitched up. One other area that you can really like go extra on is um, including pockets in your skirts. Everybody loves pockets. So that's one other um, kind of extra piece that if you want to learn, you can reach out to me too. I'd love to show you how to do pockets. Who doesn't love pockets?
All right. So if you took your pins out as you were sewing, then you're one step ahead of us. I'm going to go ahead and take these pins out. And then um, what we're going to uh, do is if you have a serger, um, this is where you would want to like do your finish on those edges. If you do not have a serger and you're a beginner, I'm just going to show you a really quick um, multiple zigzag stitch that you can use to help with your <clears throat> with your hem to reinforce it and to make sure that you're not going to fray all over the place. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these guys off. So you're going to take um, your edge, your seam line, and you're going to line it up again. Uh, this time you're going to line it up a slightly over um, to where this opening on my foot right here is going to line up with this seam line right here. Okay, so there's a foot, um, there's a line right here, this opening on this foot. I'm going to line it up with this seam line. And that's going to be my guide for this process. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose this multiple zigzag stitch. And we're going to use this to help make sure that um, this is not going to fray after we sew it. All right, so go ahead and line that up. Make sure you have your stitch right. And then you can just go for it. And if you join me in some of my other classes um, this week or last week, you'll see that for a beginner, this is um, this is really easy and simple. Uh, on a lot of the machines, there's like an overlock. There's actually an overlock option here. But if you're not um, skilled in kind of the way that your machine is going to move back and forth, this is just going to go straight forward. And it's a really simple, easy stitch to help reinforce. Okay, we got about 20 more minutes. All right. That means something wrong happened. But that's just, I think, our needle needs to be rethreaded.
Ready to go again. Right, so now that we completed that, um, we are almost there. Um, I would encourage you all to open up your seam and um, you can do a top stitch. Uh, to really just hold it down or you can leave it you can leave it like that um, you can also clean it up and cut a little bit closer to the point without cutting the point because then your thread is going to be you know come unraveled but yeah so just open up your skirt and um, you'll want to press it and so you can have some really nice clean hem lines so this skirt it's not ironed right now because I just washed it um, I went after I did uh, that process that we did together see this is just a zigzag um, multiple zigzag stitch to help reinforce it and I opened up the hem pressed it um, and instead of doing a straight stitch, I just wanted to like make it look a little bit nice. And I did another zigzag stitch on top and press the seam open here. So that's another option that you can do. Um, for those of you that um, did the tea dress with us, we didn't do for this top stitch, we didn't do a zigzag stitch like this. We just did a regular straight stitch. Let me go grab that dress. For our tea dress that we completed on Tuesday, um, I don't know if you guys can see very well, but uh, this is the seam where we pressed it open. And then you'll see right here onto the left, there is a top stitch. And it's just a straight stitch all the way down. Okay, so you can do that after you press open your seam and then put that top stitch to really just hold the hold it in place. And this one we um, finished with uh, some bias tape on the hem. So that's, <clears throat> you can do that in any of your skirts. You'll see like some of my other skirts you know, I like that. I just finished with the bias, bias tape at the end. It kind of adds a little bit of um, contrast, a little bit of style. This one I did um, a hem. I didn't use bias, so I just 
ironed it and hemmed it uh, for this skirt on the edge. Sorry. So once we have that done, go ahead and do your top stitch. And um, now we're gonna work on the waist. So what I do um, now is I bring this back to my ironing board. And depending on how thick your waistband is going to be, like your elastic that you're going to use. Grab the elastic. <clears throat> this elastic that I'm going to use is this wide. So <clears throat> when I'm thinking about um, making this top part, I only want to make sure that I'm able to clear that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up again. And you'll see how even with using the board, and it might have been because I went really fast, or maybe I didn't stitch up my sides perfectly. Um, you see how your uh, my or not yours but mine right here is not like straight across um that's okay but i am going to want to use this middle line again and this middle line where the fold was um and this is like me just how i do it because i kind of sew real fast but you can use a ruler to measure out um and make sure everything is just so on your skirt but what I do is this middle line, I line it up right here with this line. So it's still all even because if um, I line it up this way, you'll see how these edges aren't correct on the, the, these two sides over here. See how that one's bigger and that one's smaller. Or if it's here, then this line is not lined up with this fold line here. So it's kind of going off to the side. So I, I just line it up. I use that fold line and it's right here. My fold line is right there. So I just make sure that that's proper, properly lined up. And I'm, that's my guide. And my elastic, I wanna make sure it's gonna be wide enough to fit my elastic and then I go ahead and iron that. Iron that down to create a guide for myself. And at this point you can turn your steam on. <clears throat> All right, so you'll see how this kind of created a guide here. And um, it's going to work on one end, and I'm just going to fold over on the other side now. And iron that down. Because it's not straight across, it's like it's cut at an angle. You'll see that it's not gonna, you're gonna have some access here and it's gonna start to kind of crinkle. But now what I do is I do another iron all the way through, um, folding this under, but making sure that this is gonna be wide enough all the way around so that I can put my elastic through. Okay, so just like that. And again, in the beginning of my time when I just started off sewing and I took um, a month maybe to sew one skirt, I would <laughs> really measure this all the way across. Um, but I think the more and more you do it, the more you just kind of get a feel for 
it a lot of times too I use my finger as a measurement from like uh, tip of the finger to the knuckle uh, I'm part Filipino too so maybe I got that from making rice do we do that when we make our rice too measure with our knuckle all right Okay, and then you just do the same thing to the other side. And when we do this next stitch, we're gonna stitch all the way around um, and we're gonna leave actually an opening so that we can put this guy through the waist. And if uh, you want to get your ruler and your chalk out and make sure your lines are like completely, completely straight, then you can also do that. Sometimes I don't fuss with it too much because it's really going to be gathered like this when we put the elastic in. All right, so let's bring this back to our machine. Let me grab this because that's going to be your next step. <clears throat> Go back to straight stitch. And we're going to make sure we're going to stitch this all the way around. And even if your iron line isn't perfect, perfect, um, like this, that's where this guy is going to come in handy, this tape. Um, I'm going to use this as a guide to make sure that my line all the way across is going to stay the same. All right, so line everything up, get in position, and then just go for it. So I'm not really paying attention to, to this over here. I'm paying attention. This is my line guide. And um, see how this is, my elastic is still gonna fit through. So even if this line, uh, fold line isn't exactly perfect measurements, that's okay because your stitch is gonna be um, the same, it's gonna be the same length or width right here. across. And then that's why I have this tape here because that size elastic is what I use mostly. Um, and so I know that this is going to be my guideline. So we're getting back um, to the other side where we started. We're gonna go ahead and continue and stop at enough space to where we can, we have an opening to put our uh, elastic through. All right. Once we have our elastic through, then we can seal the deal and put her back. 
stitch all the way around. So you'll need a big safety pin and um, you'll need to know like how big you want your waist. Um, 15. This is the size that I want my waist. And again, if you're making it for yourself or someone else, you kind of want to test it out, see if it's going to fit over your bottom or your hips. Um, and you're gonna put your safety pin through one end of your elastic. Where did that opening go? Okay, put it through your opening and go ahead and shimmy all the way through your waist. And when you're doing this, just pay attention to this, the end. You don't want to um, lose your other end inside. Which you're going to just have to start all over, which is okay too. When you um, have elastic that this whole, is this wide, you also kind of want to make sure that it stays flat. It's a funny story. Um, I think I was making skirts one time with elastic waist. My grandma was laughing because it's like, oh, don't put elastic on mine now because I stand up. I'm sitting on my skirt. It's just going to come off. <laughs> so she's like, make sure mine has a real waist on it. I just thought that was funny. Just imagining that happening. How embarrassing that would be. All right, so here we are to the other side. And what we're gonna do now is you can go ahead and like put these together and test out, okay, is this good? Is this the right waist? Do I need to make it bigger? Do I need to make it smaller? And uh, once you kind of confirm um, your waist size and if that's good, then we're going to go ahead and pull it back again and bring it to the machine and we're going to reinforce and stitch this elastic together. For those of you that um, have never sewn on elastic, it might not look pretty. I don't know if it ever starts to look pretty, but um, what you're going to want to do is really go back and forth. Um, so I'm gonna go forward, I'm gonna go backward, forward, It doesn't have to look super pretty because it's gonna be not gonna be showing, it's gonna be in the inside. What you're doing is just really um, layering it together to seal the deal. Uh, now I'm also, I'm going to go diagonal and to this other side um, to go back and forth. So I'm going all the way across and I'm going to straighten it out again, go backwards, forward. If you ever sew jeans or something like that, you do a lot of back and forth like that to reinforce some stress points. Um, meaning like those are the areas where it really pulls on your garment. So even if you look at your garments, maybe that you're wearing right now, you'll see that there's um, a lot of back and forth stitching 
where it's heavily reinforced and they call those those stress points. <clears throat> All right, so our elastic's done. Go ahead and pull it back through your waist and we're not gonna see that guy anymore. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and finish off our waist by closing up this gap that we had for our elastic. All right, so let's go ahead, bring it back to the machine. Now we're ending um, this opening. So when I start my stitch, I wanna use the line that was previously there. I wanna go forward and then do back stitch. We're gonna line it up right to that guy to the start. And go backwards. And that's going to help uh, keep our thread from unraveling. So now we are almost to our end. And make sure your threads are cut. And we'll turn this around. We are just about done with our skirt. So here we have it, our ribbon skirt. And all we have to do now is just finish off the hem. Let's do a time check. Oh, we're like two minutes over right now. So I kind of want to uh, take a break and uh, see if you guys have any questions. Again, to do our hem, we can do a rolled hem which is what we worked on with some of our other ones where we take this bottom of our skirt after we clean up our line, cause you can take it back to the cutting board and clean your line on your hem. We're gonna take it and just roll it over and that's called a rolled hem. You can iron it down and then do a straight stitch all the way across. Or what you can do is um, grab some bias tape and you can go ahead and finish the bottom of your skirt with some bias tape like that. So that is our ribbon skirt. There you have it. I don't wanna go too much over. We do want to come back and see your guys' faces. Oh, some of you guys jumped off. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any more questions, then um, please reach out. Um, And yeah, happy ribbon skirt making. Thank you so much for taking the time to teach us today and to not only do that, but just with the patience and, and just going thoroughly into depth and just really appreciate you taking the time to do this with us today and, and what you were saying earlier today um, when you commenced this class about um, just the intention of what we're doing and and the presence overall being here and the goodness that we're trying to bring and trying to project because that's really important but I did want to say first off again thank you and to everyone um, thank you guys for all being here and um, for those who came on late or who had to unfortunately leave or whatever may be the case um, this recording will be posted on the Facebook site and with the link on the AICC San Francisco.org website um, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much again for being here. And seriously, this was, this was great. It's always wonderful to see something created, you know, especially from someone who isn't an artist. So I just wanted to say thank you again. And that's all I have to say. And that's just how I want to end it right there. With that, I will end the recording. Um, 
And yeah, thank you again. I keep saying it, but seriously, thank you. Thank you.